Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we are doing an updated character guide for Zack. He just got his FR and Echo and my man is going to be looking pretty good here tonight. So in this video we are going to look at his calls, his artifacts, and his spheres. Um, and we're going to see how good he's looking after this update. So for those of you unfamiliar with Zack, he is a primarily a tank character. Um, he doesn't counter... But he compensates for that by having very good on-turn damage. I think Zach is someone you could see as your main damage dealer. Um, we'll see how he's looking in the showcase tonight. But I think he's going to be putting up some really, really good numbers. I am going to showcase him in a very aggressive fight so we can see his tanking at work. And see how good that is going, right? Um, so <clears throat> well, we're, let's start by looking at his calls. So his calls, I think, could have some use. So Chain Slash, the main thing here is that... Um, it is going to do physical brave resistance up to the collar, but it puts a lock on. And I have said this in the past, but there is value to lock calls because there are characters that don't have locking that actually really like to be locked on. An example would be Kane and Freya because um, they're not technically tanks, but having enemies lock onto them is very good because when they jump up in the air, the enemies will attack their empty character slot and basically it's like free evasion. So there are characters like that where lock is very good. So I do think there is some use for that just for being a lock call. And then meter shots is actually a healing call and healing is very valuable on calls. So yes, I do think you could find some use for the Zach call uh, for sure, right? Um, so, okay. With that, let's look at Zach himself. Um, so my Zack is pretty much maxed out. We got to hit him up with the Ultima weapon though. So let's uh, take that from Gladio. We got to hit him up with the Ultima weapon. Make him look really good here. The armor isn't blue, but I'm heavily considering it. I just have to check my resources because I want a blue Queena for sure. I got to make sure I can swing both characters. So I'll play around with it off camera and see if I can make that happen. But let's go ahead and look at his artifacts here. Um, now, Zack is a damage dealer, so I think you really want to focus on attack and brave damage with him. So for his artifacts, I think we should go attack 108 and soldier grit boost two star. Um, this is going to give him max brave and attack, which is very good. So definitely go with that combo there. And then on the spheres, so a slot, once again, just focus on attack or brave damage spheres. Um, I put Jack on, which is an attack and brave damage trigger, or it's an attack and brave damage up. Um, Shelk is another good one. I keep forgetting to bring up Shelk, but Shelk is also attack and brave damage, which is very good. Uh, Rydia won't work because he's not weakness damage, but Jack or Shelk, I think would be very nice to get attack and brave damage. Um, I have this Fang on here. Now Fang isn't like the most optimal by any means, but it is a very easy trigger for 10% attack. So I'd say this is just an example of a generic attack up you could give him. I think Fang was just a situation where the last time I was upgrading my Zack, I happen to have this full sphere in there. I'm like, yeah, attack looks pretty good. Uh, let's just throw it on there, right? The one thing with Zach is he does have an attack that ignores defense. So if you want to take that into a factor, you could maybe lean a little bit more towards brave damage because when you're ignoring defense, attack isn't as important, right? So just keep that in mind, but not all of his attacks ignore defense. So it's not like you shouldn't avoid attack, but you might want to, if, you, if you're choosing between attack or brave damage, you might want to choose brave damage, right? And then on the B slot, you just want a good attack up. Um, so I think like uh, Snow would be a really good one because he's a lock character. So it's a very easy, just 10% attack up. Um, I believe Gladio would be another one you could use, right? Just look for any of those B slot attack up ones um, and maybe put one of those on there, right? So with that, I think we're ready. Let's go in. All right. And actually what kind of... Uh, do I yeah let's let's put Alexander on let's go let's go big on HP here make our boy look beefy all right well let's hop in um I've got force charging covered I'm not really worried about the friend unit here perfect oh I didn't really look at my calls but shoot I really should have had um Raijin call on but that's okay no actually I don't want Raijin call on because we need to show Zach's tanking off so we don't want him to have any help right so we're gonna see attacks right away now Zach hasn't had time to put anything on yet so Let's just see. Okay, so we're okay right now. We took that first brave hit just fine. Um, so let's get Garnet going. Uh, let's do Aquamarine. Okay. And then we'll do AA. <clears throat> All right, and then we are going to BT Effect. And I think with Zach, I am going to go Burst Phase right away. Because that way I can just get all of his stuff set up. And then, and he's going to be a slower character as a tank anyways. This way I can just show off his base kit. 
And a lot of you are already familiar with the base kit, right? It's really the FR is what we want to look at here and just see what his numbers are looking like. So I think I am. I'm going to just drop BT effect right away here. So let's just do it. Let's just go right in. Normally what you would do is you would open with the EX or you would drop the BT finisher if you want it right away. But we're just going to go burst phase, okay? All right, so sure. Now that we're in burst phase, let's drop the EX, which is Apocalypse. Let's see what the damage looks like here. Oof. Yeah, he's getting extra true HP damage, by the way, too. Okay. So that was 500k AoE, which isn't the craziest, but I feel like it maybe split the numbers up and didn't add them all together. I feel like he did more than that, but we'll see. Um, let's go ahead and look at his EX. So um, he does do Brave gaining, gaining between attacks. This does heal himself, which is really good because he's going to be drawing in a lot of damage. Um, and then it gives himself a Brave Barrier and it puts lock on the enemy. So the enemies now are locked on to Zack. Um, and we've got that good Brave Barrier. And that's why I usually recommend opening with the EX. They give it to you right away. So it's like a free attack. Um, but the Brave Barrier is something you want on him. So it's a, it's basically a Brave Shield that scales on his Eye Brave, right? So Eye Brave is a stat that does matter to him. But I think attack and Brave Damage would be a little bit better. But um, you can kind of judge for yourself. So this is going to reduce Brave Damage by the Shield battle, uh, value. And then if he gets broken, then it will dispel it. So the Brave Barrier basically lasts until the enemies beat through it. Um, so we got that. Let's go ahead and let's do the LD, which is called Meteor Shots. Let's see what the damage looks like here. Okay, yeah, 1.3 mil. That's pretty good damage for the LD. Now it's AoE, right? <clears throat> so this is actually going to be a party heal. So the cool thing with Zach too, it's not just that he's a tank, but he's kind of like a heal support. Like he, he's going to be able to keep your party healed up. Um, and his LD is going to give him a free ability use on the next turn. Um, and then he does get his overhead, which is called Embrace Your Dreams. And then that also does put lock on the enemy. So he has a couple ways to lock down here. Um, so what this is going to do is this is a stacking buff from the LD, his overhead. And it goes up as he gets, as he takes damage. So as he gets attacked, it'll get gain stats. And then this is going to be a max brave, brave damage and HP damage up to himself. Um, overflow stolen up. And then true HP damage added on to the attacks, and it scales based on the stacks. All that stuff scales on the stacks, and that's to himself. So that's why we saw true HP damage. Anytime a character attacks, and you see two sets of red numbers at the same time, it means that the bottom number, you're getting true HP damage on top of it, which is very powerful. We've seen this. It's like heavy prayer, basically, right? Um, and then the party is going to get a big defense up, HP damage resist up, and brave damage resist up, and HP regen. So he's a, kind of a tank in a different way where like single target, he's going to completely nullify it out. But like he doesn't really like nullify AOE stuff for the party. But to compensate, he's giving the party their own way to tank with Brave and HP damage reduction, which is good, right? Um, so let's go ahead. I would say when you get the free skill use, I think Rush Assault is what I would usually use. Now with Chain Slash and Rush Assault, you always want to attack an enemy that's targeting you. And as long as you're not competing with other lock characters, so for example, running Zach with Rubicante may not be the best idea because Rubicante's lock is going to take over and Zach's going to miss out on a lot of his kit um, other than all attacks. All attacks counts as being targeted. But Rush Assault and Chain Slash, basically he gets double attacks if he's attacking an enemy that's targeting him. So let's attack Ultimicia with Rush Assault. This should be pretty good damage. And this does ignore defense, by the way. Yeah, you see the true HP damage there. That's good. Now we're going to top that off with a chain slash at the end. Dude, 2.4 mil. That's really good. Like not even in force time, just popping off two and a half mil. Rush assaults looking pretty good. So it ignores defense. It does extend his own buffs by two turns, which is good. And then once again, it triggers chain slash after he gets a max brave up and an HP regen. So now let's do chain slash. So chain slash, this is going to put lockdown on the enemies and he's just going to trigger this twice. As long as you're attacking an enemy that's targeting him. Okay, and then 1.6 mil with some splash. Very, very good. But Rush Assault has always been like Zach's power move, right? And 2.5 mil, that's really, really nice damage. I do like that, right? Um, so Chain Slash did the attack you saw there. Brave gains between attacks. He gets a turn rate up buff and a physical brave resist buff up, which is good. And then that puts lockdown on the enemies. Um, so that's basically that. And then we'll do the FR attack here, but we'll talk about what it actually does when I do his actual FR phase, because we will do his FR phase here. 
All right, see the Scorcher Blaze here. Yeah, dude, true HP damage is so powerful. All right, two and a half mil AOE. Yeah, that's really good damage. So Rush Assault and the FR, we're looking at two and a half mil. Um, and actually, this is without Pinello's Burst Aura or his own. So these numbers actually are going to be higher because <laughs> we only have one Burst Aura up and we could have three. Uh, let's do another Rush Assault for good measure. Yeah, Zach's looking pretty good. And once again, we haven't even seen his tanking yet. We're going to start to see that now. All right, so we're going to do the BT finisher here, and then we're going to talk about what his BT effect out is, and it's very good. Uh, he basically turns into Arden, where he gets like the zombie mode, and he cannot be killed. You can see he even damaged himself a little bit there. But now he can't die. All right, so his BT which is the price of freedom. Hold on, was she gonna attack? Okay. Um, so that did the big attack there. Um, <laughs> and then the burst effect, it's gonna be eight turns for the party. What's really significant about this, cause one of Zach's old weaknesses was he was, he couldn't really help with the AOE damage. Well now his BT effect does that. Any AOE damage that's HP, it's going to be inflicted to him instead of the party. This is very similar to like what Bosch does. And this is what made Bosch always like a unique tank. Now Zach has that too, but it's only with his BT effect. Um, Zach literally cannot die. I think the only thing that can kill him is like auto kill stuff. But any normal HP attacks, whatever, cannot kill him, which is very good. Um, he gets a Brave Barrier. So remember that Brave Barrier we put on Zach earlier? He now puts that on the whole party. So now the whole party has a Brave Barrier, and then it's Brave Damage up, Brave Damage Limit up, HP Damage up, and HP Damage Limit up. So very good auras on this thing, right? So let's let uh, Pinello do some charging here. And actually, let's just go all the way. I think we're going to charge all the way um, because Zach is coming up next, and we'll just pop his force and kind of go from there. And Zach's overhead is already maxed out. I think just from Ultimicia's original, like, barrage, right? Okay. Um, once again, boring part of the showcase. Just watching me ramp up. But, yeah, we're just going to go all the way to town here. No reason we shouldn't just take it all the way. We'll, we'll let Garnet rain down. And now Aerith gets the rain down with her, which is kind of crazy. I'm thinking Aerith and Garnet is like a double support combo. Sounds kind of nasty to me with all that off turn. And they both have Echo. And then you just plug them with another like crazy DPS. Like you're you're going to be cooking. <clears throat> you are going to be cooking. Too many supports in tanks is never a bad thing. All right. So we're maxed out. I mean, I kind of wasn't paying attention. I think I maybe did a little bit of overkill there. All right. Let's hit the BT effect now. Uh, yep. So BT effect. All right, so now we have triple BT auras on, and uh, Zach's going to be doing a pretty beefy force attack here. So this force is going to be called Scorcher Blaze, and he is partnered up with Tidus, which is going to be a very fun pairing. I think a lot of you all are going to like that, because there are a lot of Tidus fans out there. All right. So let's go ahead and let's hit up Scorcher Blaze. <clears throat> All right, what is, I think this damage is going to be quite good. Uh, the other thing I would say with Zach, I would say his FR, like, isn't the craziest for, like, HP conditions as your main FR, but I think he's a very good FO, Echo. And, yeah, dude, he did 3 mil AoE. I think that's the strongest standalone FR damage I've seen, like, without having a gauge up. So I think where Zach's value come in comes in in terms of FR is use somebody else's FR, and then have him be like a late echo. Now watch this. See how we're just like tanking all this? We took zeros there. All right, now we're breaking. But that first attack, you saw the whole party took zeros, which was very good. Um, so yeah, now we can echo. And then let's talk about um, Zach's FR conditions, right? So it does put Brave Barrier on the party. Um, it does lock the enemies. Um, and then Zach during force time has HP damage limit increased if he's going against an enemy that's targeting him. So his FR is really meant for himself to use. So I'd say if you are going to use it as the main FR, look at that, all zeros. Zach just completely tanked that. Zero brave damage, zero HP damage, zero, zero, zero. That's what Zach does. And you see the gauge going up there, right? So 
um it's really meant for him to operate so if you're going to use this as the main one i would use it and then like go into his burst and give him a bunch of turns so uh, he, he does have a little bit of off turn right so if any brave damage gets reduced or absorbed it's plus 20 percent. so it is 20 percent off turn which is nice so you could do that in like a defense comp um and then if an active ally hp is healed on turn it's 40 percent and then if zach attacks an enemy that's targeting him it's 40 percent. so if zach does an attack that heals himself and is hitting an enemy it's going to be 80 percent, right um so let's go ahead and sure we'll just fatal dance here <clears throat> and then what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to do like a regular attack with zach and we're going to try to echo with him a little bit later right um so let me just check something really quick So if his EX is up, we're going to do his EX because his EX heals. So this should give us like an 80% gain here because we're attacking an enemy, targeting him, and we're healing. <clears throat> yep, 83%. So um, you want to try to do attacks that heal with Zach if you can on turn. I'm sure we'll echo with Garnet. I kind of want to get this gauge up and do like a, once again, like a really late echo with Zach and see what kind of insane damage we can get. All right, so six mil AOE there. <clears throat> now we're at 435. Um, We'll do Fatal Dance because that heals. Yep, 43%. All right, go ahead and attack us. So once again, I think like the big downfall with Zach is he doesn't counter, but he tanks really well and his on turn damage is way superior, right? So Zach took some HP damage there, but we don't care. He can't die. He can just take all that. And I believe that was all damage to the party. Look at that. Can't die. Zero HP. Doesn't matter. He's just chilling. He can't die. <laughs> he literally has the Arden effect. Like, he, he will take a bunch of damage, but as long as his health bar is glowing purple like that, he just can't die. So I thought this was a really good way to showcase him, because we are seeing all of his tanking come into play here. Um, Garnet will just do this. And look at that, he just regened like half of his health back right there, right? Um, what should we do this time? The enemies are pretty low, so let's pop the echo here. So this is at 500%. So just keep in mind, like, we could do this at max gauge and it would do even, like, way more damage than this. All right, so that was, what, 12 mil AoE? Not too bad there. At 546 to do 12 mil AoE is pretty good. And then, sure, you can cut in. That's fine. You're not going to do anything. Yeah, that, see, that was, that was an AoE. So Zach just took all that party HP damage to himself. And because he's invincible, doesn't matter. So his BT is pretty important because if he's not invincible, <laughs> um, he's going to die really quick. But it's also what's allowing him to take all the HP damage from the party. Normally that 12, like he took 12,000 HP damage, right? But that normally is supposed to be split between the party. So he should have only taken a third of that. But that's the combo, right? He absorbs all the HP. It's going to be a big number, but he can't die. So it doesn't matter. Um... And then between, you know, all the healing we got, he just heals himself back up and it's no big deal. And as long as that BT effects up, my man can't die. Um, so Garnet, let's, sure, let's just do this. Okay, and then Zach should be finishing off here. Let's finish with a Rush Assault because, I mean, I could do the BT finisher, but Rush Assault's pretty strong. Let's do a Rush Assault at 760. Uh, 13 mil. Yeah, pretty good. So anyways, guys, let me know what y'all think of Zach. I think he's really good. Really good tank. If you want to get him, he's not like a must pull. Like you don't have to have him. But I've said this before. Having many tanks in your box is always a good thing because tanks are very helpful in lockout content. So anyways, guys, let me know what you think of this guy. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.